Okay, so if you remember on the last slide, we or the last video, we ended with discussing that the points on this slide are specific to the normal curve. And from now on, what we're going to be focusing is specifically a normal curve and a normal distribution basically for the rest of the course. Okay, so a couple of things just about a normal distribution. Um, a normal distribution is a specific type of normal density curve. So in any normal distribution, it's completely specified. So basically the curve is defined by two numbers, the mean and the standard deviation. So the mean and standard deviation tell us where the center of the curve is and then how far spread out the curve is. The, cur the mean of a normal distribution is the center of the normal curve. So you're always going to draw your curve, draw the mean in the middle, and it's symmetric to it. So right along the mean, you're able to fold that curve in half. The standard deviation is the distance from the center to the change of curvature points on either side. So all that means is the standard deviation is the distance from the center, and um, it's the distance from the mean to various parts along the curve, so it's the distance from the mean to basically the end of the curve. We abbreviate the normal distribution with mean, mu, and standard deviation sigma. So when you see n, the number first in the set of parentheses is the mean, the second one's a standard deviation, and the reason we do that is because this is how it defines our curve. So our curve is defined by how spread apart the data is, therefore that's how we represent it. Now normal distributions are a good descriptions for a lot of real life data. SAT scores, IQ tests, len lengths of crickets, yields of corn. I know when I was in college my professor used to graph all of our <laughs> he would graph all of our scores and then make a bell curve out of it so you could have failed the test but still get a C if that's how he um, made sure the distribution was normal. Um, they're good approximations for uh, processes of chance outcome. An example of that would be like how the, what's the number of heads in many tosses of a coin. So in the future we're going to be using normal distributions to make statistical inferences. And what does that mean? That just means we're going to make predictions um, based on the normal curve and the probabilities associated with that. All right, so think about this for a second. Um, do you think incomes follow a normal curve? The answer to that is no, why not? Uh, they're often skewed to the right because a lot of people are going to make smaller amounts of money and then you're gonna have a few managers or CEOs that are gonna be making um, owners of the company that make a little bit more. How about heights of males? Think about that for a second. That answer is yes. There's always going to be a population of males that's a little taller or shorter. So you have your males that are in the middle, the mean, and then a few that are a little bit taller and a few that are a little bit shorter. Just keep in mind that symmetric does not necessarily mean normal, okay? Why is that? Because you can have a curve that's uniform, so all bars are exactly the same height. So think about a rectangle. Um, I can fold a rectangle in half. That's absolutely symmetrical, but it's not normal. So just keep that in mind um, when you're describing the normal curve. So the question is, when you're given a curve, how exactly can you tell if the distribution that you're given is normal? There are many normal curves, but specifically the normal distributions all have properties in common. One of them is the 68-95-99.7 rule, which I'm guessing you've heard of in Algebra 2. Okay, what is that rule? This is called the empirical rule. Um, in a normal distribution with mean, mu, and standard deviation sigma, that's what that means, um, it tells us that if we're taking a look at the mean of the data, all right, and zero here, we're just zero sort of like the middle, that's our mean, and we'll discuss what that means in a second, but 68% of the data is within one standard deviation above or one standard deviation below that mean. 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So if we have our mean here, 95% of the data has to lie between two standard deviations above the mean and two standard deviations below the mean. And then 99.7% of the data lies between three standard deviations above and three standard deviations below. So basically what that is telling us that almost all of the data has to lie within three standard deviations above or below the mean. And remember, not every curve will look exactly like this. It just depends how large your standard deviation is. Okay. All right. Um, now I just take a look at the directions. The directions specifically state, use the empirical rule to estimate the following. Now, if you are given instructions that state to use the empirical rule, then use them. 
If you are not given instructions and it just says find the area to estimate the following probabilities or percentages, do not use the empirical rule unless it specifically states to do so. And anytime you're using the empirical rule or anything else, what you want to do is you always want to draw your normal curve with the mean in the middle and then use your standard deviations to label three standard deviations above and three standard deviations below. The reason for that is remember 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations above and below. So that's gonna give us where most of our data is. So go ahead, take a second and try this, pause the recording and then take a look at the answer in a minute. Okay, so hopefully you labeled that your mean is your middle 6.84, and then to get your three standard deviations, you just add 1.55 each time. To get below, you just subtract 1.55 each time. Okay, so that's giving you your mean of your Iowa test scores with the standard deviation. Now it says what percent of vocabulary scores are less than 3.74? So that's this area right here. So what you can do is sort of break this down. If this was 68%, this could be 34, and this could be 34, 95%. So you're just basically going to add up your 34 plus your 34, and then this is, um, then this area right here is going to be 13.5% in those two areas, and then um, you have your small area that's left here, the 0 0.015 is on either tail. Okay, so you want to figure out what each of these individual probabilities are and just add these pieces right here. Okay, and then the other question is what percents are between 5.29 and 9.94? You just add 1, 2, 3, so 34 plus 34 plus 13.5, and that's specifically using the empirical rule to do that. Okay, so how'd you do? Hopefully you did okay. So here, as I was kind of describing that, um, we knew that 3.74 was exactly two standard deviations um, below the mean, so um, we knew that this area right here is about 2.5 percent okay and then over here I already said this if you draw your curve you're just going to add up this is 34 percent this is 34 and this is your 13.5 percent so add them up and that gives you 81.5 so be able to um, know what that rule is and how to apply it to the three standard deviations and break down your percentages Okay, so go ahead and try this one. Um, think about this one for a second. What percent of students scored an 8.39? So an 8.39 is right here. It's specifically saying what percent of students scored that exact value. Remember that that answer is none. Well, why is that none? Remember that whenever we're talking about this normal curve, this is an area under the curve. Remember, it's always a range of values. So when we're talking about an area, a range of values, we can't calculate a single value because that's going to give us the height, but we don't have any width to multiply it by. So using the normal curve, you can never calculate just a single percentage. It always has to be a range of values. Now, I already said this before, but just remember that the empirical rule is an estimate, okay? It's not the exact answer that you're gonna get from a graphing calculator or a table. Um, next, we're gonna investigate how to find the area under a curve, not necessarily using the empirical rule, but just keep in mind, for the future, if you're asked to estimate an area under the um, normal distribution of the curve, do not use the empirical rule unless it specifically states to do so. All right, why is that? It's because it's only it's only an approximation, it's not exact. And also keep in mind that the empirical rule, since it's a um, characteristic of a normal curve, it only applies to approximately normal distributions. You cannot apply it to a skewed distribution. The data is not within, you know, with 68% of the data is not within one standard deviation of the mean, okay? Um, also, just keep in mind the reason I say approximately normal all the time is because no real life distribution is going to be perfectly normal. So we're all deal always dealing with approximations. All right, so Let's just take a look at what happens if we can't use the empirical rule. So, and it's only an estimate, and it only gives us with specifically one, two, and three standard deviations away from the mean. So let's suppose that we're taking a look at a distribution of test scores that's approximately normal, and we know the middle 95% of the scores is between 72 and 84. All right, what are the mean and standard deviation of this distribution? Well, how could we figure that out? Well, first of all, I know that I can label 72 in 95% I know is within two standard deviations away from the mean. So I can label 72 at two standard deviations below and 84 at two standard deviations above. So then I just kind of go, all right, I got how many spaces in between it? I got one, two, three, four. 
When I do 84 minus 72, that gives me 12. So I have 12 spaces that have to be um, separated into those four different areas. So I have to add three, four times. That tells me that the mean in the middle is 78 and the standard deviation is gonna be three. Now, here's the tricky part. Can you calculate the percent of scores that are above 80? Well, 80 is right here. It's, it's not one standard deviation away. It's not two standard deviations away. So I can't use my empirical rule. It doesn't follow the empirical rule because it's not specifically at one, two, or three standard deviations away. So we're going to have to use our Z scores, remember that from our previous unit, um, to tell us what percent of the area or what area under the curve are scores above 80. So remember that all normal distributions are the same if we measure in units of size standard deviation from the mean mu as the center. So basically all that's saying is every single normal distribution, you can take all of the scores and standardize them, turn them into Z scores. Once we turn them into Z scores, all of the units are exactly the same. Okay, we call that the standard normal curve. Well, what is the standard normal curve? The standard normal curve is the normal distribution with mean of zero and standard deviation of one. Well, how do we get a mean of zero? Let's think about this. If I'm taking, remember our z-scores are, if I'm taking the mean, if I wanna find out what the center is, if I take the mean and subtract it from the mean, that gives me a z-score of zero because a z-score is how far away they are from the mean. Well, if we're looking right at the mean, that z-score is gonna be zero because it's the center of the distribution, okay? And then when we label our curve, think about the fact that we're labeling one, two, and three standard deviations. The standard normal curve says we're starting at the mean, the middle of zero, because we're zero distances from the mean, and we label one, two, and three standard deviations above, one, two, and three standard deviations below. So that one specifically represents one standard deviation, and the specific standard deviation for each curve will be different, but the standard normal curve takes all of that, turns it into z-scores, and says, okay, how far away from the mean is each point? Okay, so that's what your standard normal curve will look like. You have your zeros, your ones, your twos, your threes. Okay, now, because all normal distributions are the same when we standardize them, we can find the area under any normal curve from either a table or your graphing calculator. I'm gonna show you how to use this table, but I would highly suggest using your graphing calculator. It's gonna be much quicker. So let's just say we wanna find the proportion of observations from the standard normal distribution that are less than 81%. Okay, so thinking about that curve, like what does that look like on the curve? If I was gonna draw this, okay, if z is less than 0.81, here z is less than 0.81, that's not part of my empirical rule, what area does this take up? So on the table, you're gonna go down to z is 0.8, and then you wanna scroll over to the second position of one, and that's your 0.1, so that tells me about 0 0.7910 um, area is under the curve here, okay? So it's taking about 79% of the area, everything less than 0.81. All right, so um, how would we do this if we're looking at proportions of observations that are not necessarily just to the left? So what would we do if we're taking a look at um, an area between negative 1.25 and 0.81? Now what I want you to keep in mind is anytime you look at that this table on this page, this is always the area to the left. So if it says greater than, Oh, any, even if you look up 0.81 on the table and it says find the area greater than, you look up 0.81, it's still the area less than. But we're gonna use the fact that underneath the curve, the whole area is equal to one to find areas that are greater than. Okay, so let's just think about this. There's two ways to do this. Number one, we are looking at the area between negative 1.25, which is right about here, and 0.81, which is right here. Okay, two ways to do that. Number one, we can find the area all to the left of 0.81. All right, so that's 0.7910, that's the whole thing. But there's a chunk I wanna get rid of. I need to get rid of this, this white piece right here. So this area here represents the chunk that I'm sort of taking out right here. I'm taking out the area to the left of Z. We're taking out the area to the left of negative 1.25. Okay, so if I take that whole thing, 0 0.7910, that's the whole area, minus what's to the left of it, which is 0 0.1056, that gives me my final answer.
Okay, there's another way to do this. Um, you could also just find the area to the left here, the area here, and subtract that from one, and that would also give you the area of the